All right, so today I got a 2014, I believe, Crew Cab Silverado. Uh, we're going to put a 4.7 drop on it. Um, gentleman said get as low as I can without the tires beating the fenders to death. So that's what we're going to set him up with. I'll, uh, I'll unbox the drop kit, show you everything in just a second. All right, so when you open the box, um, this drop kit is a 34.170. Um, this is for a truck that has a cast steel control arm uh if you have anywhere from 07 to 2018 you need to confirm on your control arms which ones you have uh there's three different ones there's a stamp steel a cast steel and an aluminum control arm um the stamp steel and the aluminum take the same kit i believe but the cast steel takes a different kit um read your directions uh you got to use a 17 inch or larger wheel um which I don't think anything comes with smaller than a 17 anymore. Uh, kit is adjustable two to five inches of front drop and the rear is adjustable five to seven. When you open the box, this is what you'll get. You get a McGaughy's adjustable strut. Uh, it's adjustable from stock height to three inches of drop depending on how many of those washers you put in it. Uh, the rear shocks, shock extenders. This is a rear shackle flip bracket. Uh, the customer wants this truck set at seven so we will not be using those. What they do is your shackle, your leaf spring usually comes up like this and then the shackle goes down to that hole. That uh, allows the leaf spring to come under and then the shackle goes up and that raises the back of these trucks uh, one to two inches depending on where you put it at on those holes on the frame. Uh, we're not gonna be using those because the customer wants all the low he can get. Uh, front, you have a McGaughy's uh, drop spindle. The rear flip kit, that's flip kit. Uh, that's the upper u-bolt brackets and that's the lower u-bolt brackets and then you got some bump stops over there um i'll be honest i usually don't use those because uh it seems to bottom out a little more with those than if they don't have them because uh, they're kind of tall so i usually just uh leave those off that way it's not hitting the bump stops um because those are pretty hard and you can still you can still feel the impact so <music> So what you just saw is take loose. First thing we took loose was the tie rod in. Uh, 21 millimeter for that. Once we got the tie rod in loose, um, we took the ABS lines and brake line loose. That's 10 millimeter. It's two of those, one on the control and one on top of the spindle. Uh, then we took the caliper off. That's two 18 millimeters. Um, make sure you hang that guy up. Don't let it hang by the brake line because that's bad. Um, you don't want to have to buy a brake line too. Uh, once we got that off, um, we took the, the the rotor loose. Uh, I don't remember what size. It's a it's a star head. I think it's like a T25. Uh, got it loose. Took the ball joints loose. Upper one is 18 millimeter. Bottom one is a 24. Uh, took the hammer and knocked those loose. Those are ready to come loose now. Also took the top of the strut loose. Uh, that's three 18 millimeters. You're also going to need a flat head or a clip tool or something because there's a couple wires clipped to the top of it. And we took the bottom of the strut loose. That's two 15 millimeters. And it's ready to come on farther apart. Um, it's, it's fairly simple. These ball joints actually broke loose like second lick, third lick. Um, sometimes it takes a while. But these these come apart, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to try to not have to take the sway bar loose, but I may have to take it loose. Um, but it should be able to flex it down enough to, to be all right. All right, so my work car is destroyed. Don't don't look at that. But we got the factory strut in here. We got to take it apart so we can get the coil spring off. I uh, got these McPherson strut uh, compressors. You can get them at O'Reilly's or Advanced Auto Parts or whatever. Uh, these have taken apart a million struts. A lot of people like to use the wall mount ones. I don't have one, so I've, this is what I use. Um, they, they work, so.
take this top plate off, make sure you keep this washer with it. Because if you don't put that washer on there and put that top nut on, as soon as you take the pressure off these with the new strut, it's going to blow apart and hit you. I know that from bald experience because I've had them come apart and hit me before. It's my own stupidity. So can't be mad at anybody else but myself. Um, if you'll notice how this thing comes out, there is a bump stop inside that will not come out the bottom. So, you take the top plate loose, get the bump stop out, pull that out, and you push that one in. All right, that's the bottom of your strut, or your bottom of your coil, I'm sorry. Here's your new strut. Take your nut off the top. All right, and then you have a new bottom plate. Depending on how low you want this thing, depends on how many rings you put in. Hang on just a second, I will show you the paperwork that shows you how many rings are for what amount of drop. All right, so if you look at this right here, six rings, zero drop. Each ring is about a half inch of drop that you take out. Uh, we're gonna set this truck at a four inch drop total. So the two inch drop spindle and then the two rings left will be a two inch drop, which will make four in the front. So we're gonna put two two rings and put it back together. Right. So you get your new strut. Slide those on just like that. And you got your new bottom plate. Slide on just like that. All right, and then you got this new top plate uh, washer right here. Hang on. You getting it done over her? I'm trying, baby girl. What you doing? Failing. Failing at what? Life? No! <laughs> I don't want to. Dunking the basketball. Mm -hmm. well, me and you was born a little on the hot, short side. Hot challenge side. Do you like Bose? Do you know who that is? Muggy Bose? Mm -hmm. I do know who Muggy Bose was. Oh. He's an NBA player. He was in Space Jam. Guess how tall he was. Five foot six. Nope. How much? He was shorter than you. Was he? Hold that right there. He was five foot two. Let me pick this stuff over right here. From what I remember. I think. I think he was a little taller than that. He just looked really short next to all those basketball stars. Oh, no, right. I looked them up a while ago. So you got the your, other day. So you got your lower plate with your washer. Don't don't forget your washer, please. I right, wash your hands. Don't hit me. All right. Oh no. Hold that right there one more time for me. Huh? Hold it for me one more time. Will you bring my phone? No. Oh, never mind. I thought he was going all the way up there. All right, your new top nut is a 17 millimeter. That's where the factory one was 18. We're going to try to hit it with oh, the no, impact. You, and hold it, it, you hold it, thing. you hold it. You hold no, it. no. Oh, I ain't going to go. Guess what? It didn't fit. That means we gotta do it with a wrench. Can I do it? All right, I was having some technical difficulties with my um, clamps there. Uh, also, these three bolts, the it's got a flat head, like a, whatever you call it. The, the, the head of this is flat, but it has the index into this rubber piece. So make sure when you're letting the pressure off of your spring that you index those. Uh, also, you need to take these clamps off of here, or these clips off of here, and transfer them over to the new strut. Let's take a flathead. You make it sound so easy. Yeah. Just pop them off. It is easy sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't cooperate at all. Exactly what it's doing. It's not cooperating. Yeah, you're right. All right, these top studs are offset. Uh, you got two that's close and then one that's far away. If you look up in there, you can usually tell which way they're going to index. Man, I missed it. There we go. And that strut goes up in there. And then you fat your nuts, go back on top.
All right, once you get those nuts on, just start them. Don't tighten them yet. You need to turn the bottom of the strut where to line up. I usually just use a big adjustable. If I can get this one. Can you get them in there to work? Uh, I just usually use a big adjustable. Um, you can turn it right on around there. Sometimes you can turn it by hand, but this one doesn't want to turn. All right, put your bottom clips back on. And then your 215 millimeter bolts. is real simple. Tighten everything down. All right, so with this spindle, you're gonna reuse the factory two bolts here, but it comes with a stud for the top one. You need to put a little Loctite on that guy and uh, spin it in there. Um, takes an Allen head in the end of it to uh, tighten it down. Tighten it all the way down, and then you slide your hub over it before you start these bolts, you need to reach between the hub and the stud and start this bolt. And then uh, go to spin it down a little bit. You'll have to put a wrench in there to do it. Um, spin that down a little bit. And then once you get that started where it's pretty tight, um, you can tighten these two bolts and then come back and finish tightening this one. Uh, you have to have the rotor off the hub for that. Um, so you got to do that. And then also it comes with a new lower ball joint nut that goes, it's, it goes up into the spindle so that it'll clear those 17 inch wheels. Um, cause when the wheel's here and you move it up to here, it moves the bottom of that wheel up from here to here, makes it really tight on the spindle. Um, so that, that helps with that. If you don't do that, um, you're probably gonna run into some clearance issues if you got a stock 17 or 18. Um, also, once you put this on and you tighten it all the way down, you take a cutoff wheel and you cut the stud off. Um, if you don't do that, you didn't really benefit at all because the stud is what's going to rub the wheel. So I'm going to throw this together and then uh, you'll see it get put on the truck. Also, pull this dust shield off. You have to trim the bottom corner of it to clear. Um, I'm pretty sure it shows you this in the direction. I've done a bunch of them, so I kind of know what to clear. Come off this notch right here and just come straight down. My sharpie ain't going right now. Uh, just like that. So cut off wheel press nips or whatever and uh, trim that up. And uh, it's ready to put back together. All right, so uh, I got the shield trimmed. Make sure you pay attention to how this uh, comes apart. All right, I'm going to stick that in there. Start at about two rounds. Uh, where'd the crap mother bolt go? Same thing here, start at about two, three rounds. And then, if you can see right down in here, we gotta get that hub in just the right spot where we can get our fingers in and start this nut. Can be kind of a pain in the butt. And it started. 
Turn it down as far as you can with your finger. Grab you a wrench. I believe that's a 19. Yes, it is a 19. Uh, I'm going to tighten this guy all the way down. So I don't tear my part apart first. Then I'm going to flip my spindle back over. Grab my impact on my 15 that I just had. Tighten those guys down. Sure, there's a torque spec for that, but uh, I don't know it, so can't tell it to you. All right, I'm going to take the new ball joint nut over here and put the spindle back on. you about the new lower ball joint nut forgot to tell you about the new upper ball joint nut it is the same as the one that we put there same thread and all um, the pack comes with four of these and it just slides in there we we'll grab our 24 on they'll tighten them up just all you're doing is frying that spindle up so that, that taper in that spindle will seat against that ball joint and make it quit spinning um, the upper is i believe an 18 i'm sorry a 19 we just had it over here Same way on this one, it's uh, spin. So, I'm gonna grab my electric ratchet, get my pry bar again. Get in here and pry down on this door. Spindle is tight. All right, so your um, your spindle comes with a bolt already installed right here. It's a, it's a new bolt for the uh, upper brake line bracket. Um, you don't reuse the factor one on that. Every one of these I've ever had, it didn't fit down flush. So I always just pulled them that way. them down and they bent right where they needed to go um, all right, so just drop that tie rod in there just to hold it in place my threads are there there's a tapered seat on this it's just like so Head that goes for a star head that goes back in there. That just holds your rotor to the hoof. Uh, I've done a bunch of trucks that didn't have this. I guess people had serviced them and took them out and didn't put them back in. Always put them back in. If it was there, it's there for a reason. Take the tire right in back out, turn your spindle all the way. Now you can hang your brakes right back on.
brake line back up. ABS sensor wire needs to be hooked back up. That wire's got a little red clip in it that uh, you have to push up before you can unclip it. Uh, they can be a pain, but you can do it, I promise. All right, and then I got a 21, it goes back on the tire rod in. All right, now I'm gonna come back with my cutoff wheel here in just a second. Cut this stud off, and this side is back together. So, so far we took the U-bolts loose. Uh, you gotta reuse those, so keep those and the nuts. Uh, took shocks off, a bed of course. Uh, there's three bolts on each side. Uh, these two are actually a bolt. The third one is a bolt going up into the frame of the welded nuts. You don't have to hold, but you have to hold the top and hit the bottom of this. Uh, you gotta get the hitch loose because you can't get this bolt out. Uh, it hits the hitch behind there. Um, you take those three bolts out of each side, take these two out, and then there's two 13 millimeters right here that'll hold the hitch on the truck, but it'll let it sag enough to get the bolt out. Um, Alright, so you got to take this front bolt, 
not completely loose, but loose enough to flip this uh, leaf frame. This is a 12 millimeter. It'll fit over the end of the bolt. When you hold the nut on 15, this needs to be on tighten, which is actually loosening. Run it right down on there. You don't have to mess with trying to get a socket on the head on the back side. All right, push that through, just through, like so. Alright, step right there. You can take this leaf free. Just like that slip. Yep. Alright. And then, to the back side, pop that back in. That's a really good trick yes. a lot of people may not know about. Especially the socket right here, because uh, right. I fought with that inside. And that's a box two frame. If your socket falls off your ratchet while you're doing that, it's gone forever. You might can fish it out, but you'll be lucky if you do. You can just get a plastic cutter and cut a hole in the frame. Yeah, people don't like that. <laughs> All right, this is on loosen, which is actually gonna tighten that nut. Just like that. All right, go ahead. Are you recording? Yeah. Uh -uh. No, okay. All right, so take your gas nut, wiring harness for the fuel pump. Just put that guy under there, it's out of your way now. Take a 15 16 socket, put it on loose, stick it over there, break it loose, get this. Don't try to uh, break it loose with that because it's not going to work. Just out Pick that up. Oh, never mind. You can't. You can't. Dang. That thing's looking dead at me now. Oh, go ahead. Hold on. Just go ahead and start over. All right. All right. All right. So what we did on the other side is we just stuck our hand on the back side and pushed the bolt back through. Uh, on this side, we have a gas tank. Can't do it. Unless you drop the gas tank. So what I do is I take my welder, run me a little bit of wire out, stick it in there. Takes a couple tries. I wonder if we don't need to just put, yeah, pull the leaf spring up. Yeah. Yeah. Right, push the back of that leaf spring around that way, towards the inside of the frame. All right, a little bit too much. Just grab it with the freaking box grips. <laughs> Nothing to Mark Lane to do. All right, so after some technical difficulties, I said some bad words. I had to edit them out. Um, we got it. Actually, I think it's operator equipment mismatch. the bowl to the leaf spring moving around <laughs> or it could be that battery div always not really they seem to last a long time yep all right so the, this is the flip kit lower plate top plate flip kit has a hole in it hole goes to the front of the truck Right. So we're gonna slide. Oh, hold on. First, we're gonna let the truck down a little more. I'm gonna come around this side. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, that don't fit. All right. Show them that right there. All right. So that dowel's rusty. And that kind of fits on there, but it don't fit like I like it. So I'll fix it in just a second with a drill and a reamer. Five eighths reamer. Bet it fits now. We got seven seconds to work. Too hot. Look at that girl. Standing her door jam. <laughs> Get indeed, does fit. 
All right, so we got the flip kit in. Um, this one's kind of been aggravating, but we got it in. This is your top plate. Bolt, your bolt goes in the dial pin hole. And bolts go like so. And then your bottom plate goes on generally like this, and it goes in this hole. Um, you'll be able to tell when you get in there if your bolts are crooked or straight or whatever. I'm a super. All right, so this is the next day. Uh, I had to stop working last night and get back uh, inside for a few minutes. Um, we're going to jump in right where we left off. The flip kit's on. All the U-bolts are tight. Um, it's sagging all the way down now. we got to bolt the hitch back up. Two bolts with nuts here. A uh, bolt right here with a welded nut. Two 13s and two bolts here. Um, get the hitch bolted back up. Uh jack it back up put the put the jack stand under the end pick it back up snug these bolts up um and stick the shocks on once we get the shocks on uh, i'm gonna take the plasma you can do it with a cutoff wheel or a grinder uh i'm sorry a grind a sawzall um i'm gonna cut this bump stop bracket off if you don't it's gonna ride terrible it's gonna be sitting on it uh just cut it off flush right here with the bottom of the frame all the way around and uh that's it. You don't even have to notch these trucks at seven inches a drop. Um, and the back will be done. Besides putting the bed back on. All right. So before you start cutting these bump stop brackets off, you just get these lines away from the frame. Uh, 13 millimeter. Get these two bolts loose. Save them because you're going to need them. All right. Uh, and you also, if you don't have a clip tool, you can use a flathead. It's kind of aggravating, but you can do it. You get in behind these wires. Just pry them up. Just right here. You get under the uh, top washer, pry it up. Come loose. Got one right here. One more right there. All right, and then let me show you what I usually do. I have my trusty green ratchet strap slash pull strap. Not really a ratchet strap. Run around it. Now pull it tight. And now I got plenty of clearance. If you don't do that, there's a good chance you're gonna cut through a wire or brake line, and then it's just gonna be more aggravation, more time. So who spend that minute and a half to do that? So this kit come with shock extenders. Um, I didn't want to try to do it on the ground and show you and film it. So I waited till I picked the truck back up to put the bed bolts in, but it's pretty simple. It just slides over your factory bolt holes here. Um, if you look, they send two separate bolts, uh, just bolts on each side. I always put the head on the inside, bolt out. 
because uh, the end of the bolts touch each other if you don't, if you run them to the inside. And then right here, you have to drill one hole. Uh, take just a second. I don't even know what size it is. I just grabbed the one that matched the hole and popped the hole in there. Uh, got a 3 8 bolt that goes in. Uh, what that does is that keeps the bracket from being able to flop around. If you don't do that, it's going to say flop, 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 flop. Do that, people. Um, at four or five inch drop, you probably won't have to do this. Um, at seven, I would definitely put it on there so your, your shot's not bottoming out. Um, because when when I had the weight of the truck on here before I picked it up, the, the cover of the shock right here was it was on down here pretty good ways. So this just moves the bottom of the shock down and gives you some more uh, shock travel. Uh, pretty pretty simple to do. So uh, make sure you do that part of the the kit. So there you have it, McGaughy's uh, 4.7 drop on a 2014 Silverado. Um, anything from 2007 to 18 pretty much has the same suspension. Uh, they had a couple different control arms, but the, the amount of drop still gonna sit you about like this right here. Um, we do have a little bit of rubbing front and rear with these 285 45s. The customer said that he was gonna get a little bit shorter tire um, to, to leave it where it was. So. Kid just drove to town, rides, drives great. Uh, roughed in the alignment for him, so till he get to the alignment rack, and she's ready to go home. What's the thing, kiddo? I like it. Me too. I really like the black on black. Get that bumper and them headlights painted, and she'll look killer. Thank y'all for watching.